Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Cantor. I'm 24 years old, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I use, yeah, clap. <laughs> I use he, him pronouns, and I'm a youth ambassador for the Human Rights Campaign. Before I begin, I wanna state that I don't readily share details of my past, nor do I believe it's healthy to allow trauma to play an integral role in your identity. Readily re-exposing trauma to others often isn't productive as it creates a falsely fabricated sense of care and compassion founded upon sympathy rather than genuine love and belonging. And it is love and belonging that we all seek and that is essential to the story I tell today. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. A Mexican transracial adoptee raised in a white Jewish household that at its best was full of love. I had a large extended close-knit family who took care of one another, and to this day still do. Yet at its worst, my family often spoke poorly on sexual orientation and on race, messages that often demeaned my own identity and made me feel unsafe and unwelcome. This was only amplified by the fact that my nuclear family was tumultuous. My father's predisposition was volatile, and he often struggled to maintain work. My mother paid the price for this, as did I, witnessing and trying to come between them in their nightly fights. In addition to the fear my home life brought, I was further terrified that someone would discover my other secret, that I was gay. For when I was 11, I was taught what happens when others find out. It was at a summer camp when I first heard the words gay and faggot spoken by the other boys. As a reserved kid who spent most of my time reading, writing, or acting, it wasn't long before those words were directed at me. Eventually, one of those boys attacked me, cracking open my skull. I knew from that moment on I was different, that something was wrong with me. I remember looking into the mirror after the attack, silver staples protruding from my partially shaved head, thinking to myself how I was worthless, inferior, and how I deserved this. As life went on, I realized I had no place in the world. I was alone, with no one to guide me or protect me. And each night before I went to bed, after my tears faded and my hopelessness subsided, I would lie awake and I would dream of home, a place where I care was cared for, a place where I belonged. Internally, I carried this dream with me throughout my life. Yet externally, I strive for perfection in every regard. For if people could not love me for who I was, at least they could lo love me for what I accomplished. I became a talented athlete, becoming one of the top tennis players within the state and the region. I pushed myself hard in the classroom and, uh, until I was accepted into several top 10 and top 20 universities. As I went forward in my education and in my quest for greatness, I continued to search for home. This all too often led to the beds of other men, men that did not care for me, men who harmed me, men who violated me without my consent. It was not until my senior year of college that I began to process my traumas and my negative thought patterns. I realized I had striven for perfection to create feelings of worth for myself. Yet above all else, the thing that I needed the most was love, acceptance, and belonging. It was with Emory Club Tennis that I first found these. When I first arrived at Emory, I was close to giving up. The amount of times I sat in my sophomore dorm room feeling alone and hopeless are more than I could count. Yet the club took me in. They showed me my worth was not measured by my skill with a racket or any other skill I had honed to deadly perfection. Rather, I could be accepted for simply being me. They showed me what friendship and care looked like, something I had never really experienced before. And it wasn't until I graduated and stepped down as their president that I realized this. Not until I started crying aboard a campus shuttle, listening to Ben Platt's You Will Be Found, that it all finally made sense to me, when I realized what home meant to me. I used to believe I was the only one to experience hardship, isolation, or to dream of home. I now know this is a phenomenon that is shared amongst many LGBTQ individuals, and it contributes to many of the problems our community faces today. For people who are rejected are more likely to engage in sexual acts in order to build an emotional connection. They're more likely to use illicit drugs to deal with the pain of isolation. 
And being alone, they're more likely to contemplate the idea of self-harm as they don't believe their lives are worth saving. We all need support systems to study us, and we all need a place to call home. As educators, counselors, families, and friends, it is our duty to be there for our youth, to support them, and to ensure they obtain the sense of belonging. As for me, I've begun to reclaim my home. I have friends, a select few who I entrust the world to, good people who uplift me and add value to my life. I've learned to pour my soul into my passions, into tennis, running, being in nature, and writing. I fell in love with someone who did care for me, and still does. And in doing so, I learned what healthy relationships should look like. And above all, I've learned to live above my past, finding happiness within myself and the world and the waves around me, learning that my most solid support and my truest home is in here, in myself. We are who we are, and that doesn't change, nor do our pasts ever truly leave us. Yet it is our duty to accept ourselves, to heal ourselves, and to connect with those around us based on our passions, talents, and our loves. Don't let who you are stop you from living and loving life fully, from making meaningful connections with others. There are good people in the world. Keep your focus on the good and build upon it, and I promise you, you will find your home. I am pleased to say this fall I will be heading to graduate school to pursue degrees in both law and social work. I plan on pursuing a career along the intersections of family law and child welfare, working to help neglected and abused children, as well as victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. For I'm now the hero I once needed. Things do get better. You're not alone. You will be found, and that home you long for is out there, in others and above all, in yourself. I promise you. Go find it and become the hero you once needed as well. Thank you.